Hey everybody, Ryan here at e Trailer. Today on our 2020 Dodge Durango, we're going to be showing you how to install the Hopkins four-way flat trailer wiring harness. Before we uh, get into that though, why don't we just take a minute, check this out, and make sure it's going to work for you. Since the Durango is a full-size SUV, uh, people use them to pull some trailers around and whatnot. And so if that's what you plan on doing, you're going to need a way to illuminate all the lights on the trailer, not only uh, to keep you safe, but to keep you legal as well. Uh, and that's because all the states require that you have working trailer lights when you're towing. So this is where uh, a kit like this is going to come into play. It's going to power everything up and uh, get that done. This is just a four-way flat type connector. Uh, really common size, you know, a lot of the smaller and medium-sized trailers will have this. And it's going to provide us with our brake lights, our turn signals, and our running lights. When it comes to some of the other kits available, um, Hopkins does things a little bit differently. Um, some of the wires are a little bit thinner. Is that a huge deal? You know, it's up to you. Uh, they're still going to get the job done and work just fine. Uh, I do like, though, they, they add some nice touches to it. Um, some of the connections that you're going to have to make are already pre-made for you. So if you're uncomfortable doing stuff like that, um, this kit, you won't have to make as many as some of the others. They give you a tube of uh, dielectric grease, too, or this little packet here. And with this stuff, you can put it on the terminals uh, every now and again. Put a coating on it, and that's going to help keep them, um, you know, clean and not uh, have corrosion built up and everything. And that usually is what uh, ends up killing wiring is corrosion and get water and stuff in there. Um, to uh, go with that, they give you a real nice cap here real sturdy to, to help keep all that moisture and stuff out. So a nice touch there, but other than that, at the end of the day, you know, it's gonna get the job done and work just fine. Um, as far as the install goes, it's not really super complicated. It's just time consuming and a little tight. Uh, I do wish uh, where you mount up the actual module box, I wish they'd give you a little more wire to work with, make it a little more user friendly to uh, find a spot to mount it. But it's something you're gonna have to do one time and then not have to worry about it, right? So um, with that said though, why don't we go ahead and start to hook everything up now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the back of our Durango and we're gonna to need to remove our tail lights so you can open up the hatch. And then in the corners here, we're gonna have two fasteners. Here's the two fasteners and to get these out, you can take a flathead screwdriver, just gonna pry underneath the head of it. And then you can work the base out if the two come apart, you simply just push that back in like that uh, to, to get them back together. But same thing for this one here. Pry that out, pull it out. We should be able to grab our tail light and start to kind of maneuver it around while we're pulling back on it. And we're trying to get the fasteners to release inside here, which it will take a little bit of effort. Just take your time with it, but eventually we'll get it to pop out and then we can disconnect it. To disconnect the light, you can push down on the center tab, pull back to release it. We'll set our light off to the side and then do the same thing to get the passenger side one removed. Now we can grab our T connector here. So you got, uh, you want the side that has the yellow and brown wire. It's just gonna plug right in to the factory one. This will go to the tail light eventually, but for now, we're gonna take our four-way flat end, drop that down through this opening where it eventually will come out of the bottom of the vehicle. It might be hung up down there, but it is there. And we're also gonna do that. With our green side. I can take the bundle of red power wire, drop that down as well. And I'm going to take the white wire with the pre-attached ring terminal, which will be the ground wire. Feed that down too. Now we can connect our power wire to the 
red wire coming out of the converter box there. So you'll strip back the insulation. Give that wire a twist. And then simply just plug it into the end of the butt connector. And crimp it down. So I went ahead, put some electrical tape over our connection that we made there, just got a little bit of extra protection. And then we can take the other part of our T connector, we'll plug that into the tail light. And then I'm just going to kind of start to feed everything down into the tail light pocket. Drop on down, and then we can reinstall the light the opposite way that we removed it. Now underneath the vehicle on the driver's side, we can start to secure uh, some of our um, parts as well as run some of our wires. So the first thing that I did was zip tie our converter box to some of that factory wiring there. And I know it's kind of buried up there, but there's really not a whole, uh, not a whole lot of places to go with it. So that's what we're kind of limited to. So zip tied it and that'll work just fine. Now we can ground our wire out. So the white one with the pre-attached ring terminal, take a soft tapping screw and secure it to a clean piece of metal. I'm just gonna go right, right here in this area. I'm gonna run it down until it's tight and we'll provide us your ground. Now you can start to route your green T-connector wire as well as your four-way flat wiring. So when you route any types of wires, you wanna do your best to avoid any hot or moving parts. You can secure it with zip ties. Run up, up and over the bumper beam here and zip tied it to our bumper where I drop down our four-way flat connector and just Use a dust cap to put it around the safety chain opening on our hitch. So that's where that one ended up. The green wire with the T connector continues over to the passenger side. And right here in this area, what I did from up top in the tail light pocket where the opening is, I dropped down a pull wire. So this is a piece of tubing. Uh, for those of you at home, you can use a metal coat hanger if you straighten it out. Something along the lines, drop it down then you're able to tape this wire to it. And then when you go back up top, uh, you're able to pull it right up into position. Back up top, passenger side, pulled on our fish wire. And that pulled up right into the pocket where I simply just connected it to the factory wiring and to our tail light, just like the other side. And now we'll get this one reinstalled as well. Back underneath the vehicle now, we can route our red power wire towards the front. So, runs along through here, comes down, and then it goes up and over our subframe. When you route it here, be careful, there's a lot of moving stuff going on. And so I brought it up. And then since our battery is on the passenger side, I started to route the wire over that way. And so it kind of comes up through here and along through this edge. And the closer we get to the front, the more and more it kind of opens up and becomes easier. So there's some factory wiring, um, you know, encased in this plastic here. So I just use that. Easing your zip ties along the way. And then the wire goes up into the engine comp compartment through there. Um, and I did that the same way we got our tail light connector. And I just dropped a pull wire down, taped it to it, and pulled it right up. In the engine bay, this little area here on the passenger side, that's where a power wire came up. And I took the included fuse holder, removed the fuse out of it, and then used the butt connector to pair it up and connect it to our power wire that we routed up here. 
Now this one's a heat shrink butt connector. And so you want to seal up the ends. You can use a heat gun to get that done. Now you can hook up the fuse holder, which I've done just because we're so limited on space. It's honestly more beneficial to see it like this. But underneath this red cap here, pop that off. It's a 13 millimeter nut. You can remove that nut then take the ring terminal that was on our fuse holder, slide it over and tighten the nut back down. With that hooked up, now you can take the fuse and place it into the holder. And this is a good idea to test our wiring to make sure it's working properly. Uh, I suggest using a tester like this as opposed to just plugging it into your trailer. If your trailer has any issues, you know, it might mislead you into thinking it's something we did on the vehicle side. But we'll go ahead and hit our left turn, our right turn. We'll step on our brakes and turn on our running lights. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Hopkins four-way flat trailer wiring harness on our 2020 Dodge Durango.